Hey y'all, got a real little bit of Alabama moon here. Uh, last time we were together, uh, moon had gone outside to relieve Hal who got in trouble again for trying to beat up on moon and moon got the best of him. So Hal has to sleep outside and moon is not feeling right cause he's stuck inside. So moon and Hal actually swap places. And uh, Moon prefers to sleep outside, which makes sense because that's where he's lived his whole life. And Hal comes and sleeps inside. So uh, the morning comes and Moon tells Hal to go back outside. Hal reluctantly goes. And then when they're eating breakfast, I believe it is, uh, Moon has a conversation with Kit. And in that conversation, Moon explains to him that he's ready to bust out. He's, he's got an idea of what it's gonna take to break out of Pinson. And Kit asks if he could go along. And all the while, uh, Kit also explains to Moon that the kids wanna vote Moon president and kind of be their leader since uh, he can he's willing to take on Hal. Moon's like, I don't know what all that means and does Hal know about this? And Hal seems like he might be upset about it. Uh, but regardless, Moon says it doesn't matter because he's ready to break out. Chapter 16 is where we left off. Let me get my palate cleansed. Really just my throat warmed up and coffee is delicious. Chapter 16. During our lunch break, Kip followed me to the corner of the play yard where Hal stood with some other boys. I saw them stop what they were doing and watch us. Hey, I said. Hal looked around, the cor looked around at the others and then looked back at me. Hey, come over here with me and Kit, I said. I got something to tell you. Hal rubbed his palms on his uniform nervously. You know I ain't mad at you anymore, right? He said. I know. I forgot all about that. We got other stuff to talk about. Hal glanced around at his friends and nobody said anything. All right, he said. I led the two of them to a spot in the play yard where no one would hear us talking. You want to help us bust out of here? What? I'm busting out. I need your help. How the hell are you going to bust out of here? Kit's going to let us out. I got it all figured out. Hal pointed to Kit. He's going. What's wrong with Kit? Well, he's got to have medicine for one. He can't do anything without getting sick. You worry about yourself, Hal, Kit said. You don't know about me. It's whatever, Hal said. Nobody's ever gotten out of Pinson anyway. You can't get us out of here, Moon. I can get out of most anywhere. Hal studied me for a second and then shrugged his shoulders. Well, sure, he said. If you think you can do it, I'll help you. But I want to come, though. I told Kit, I don't care who comes. I don't care who comes with me. What do you want me to do? You're going to drive. Drive? Yeah. You know how to drive? Well... I used to drive my daddy's truck a little, just around the clay pit. Driving's driving, right? <clears throat> I, I guess, Hal said. As long as you can see over the steering wheel, we'll figure out the rest. I think I can do it. Good, because they'll catch us for sure if we start running for right outside that fence. I could tell that Hal was getting excited. His face twitched, his hand jittered against his sides. When do we go? He asked. Tonight. After Mr. Carter leaves and Mr. Jeans is asleep in his house, I'll wake you up. So if you remember, Hal is, I don't even think he's 14 yet, because I think they said you go to Helen Weiler uh, for the older kids when you turn 14. So Hal's pretty close to 14, says that he drives his daddy's truck around the clay pits. Now, I don't know about you guys, I was not driving any trucks when I was uh, 13, 14 years old. Although, that does sound like a good time, driving around in some muddy clay pits with a beat-up old truck. Uh, I'm inferring that it's a beat-up old truck, and I'm uh, Hal drives around the clay pit in his daddy's beat-up old truck, and they're depending on Hal to drive, but I wonder where they're going to get a car from. I climbed out of my bunk a couple hours after lights out. I passed by Kit and Hal, and both their eyes were wide open and watching me. I'll be back, I whispered. Wait here. 
I slipped out of the bunk room and down the hall into the rec room. Then I crawled under the ping pong table and used a penny I'd found on the play yard to unscrew a, unscrew a flat piece of metal fastener that held the two halves of the table together. I went back out into the hall with that fastener and crouched against the wall opposite the entrance to the rec room. From there, I could hear the opening and closing of the front door. I sat until I heard Mr. Carter leave at midnight. When I returned to the bunk room, Hal and Kit were still watching me. He's gone, I said. Get dressed. The two of them got out of their beds quietly. Then all three of us put on our uniforms and jackets. Man, I still don't see how this is going to work. Hal whispered. Come outside, I said. We can talk where nobody hears us. I pushed the door to the play yard open and we stepped out into the night. I showed him the fastener. You see this? Hal, you lift me and Kit up onto that roof of one of those school trailers. I'm going to unscrew a piece of that sheet tin with this ping pong piece for a screwdriver. I figure that roof's about 12 feet wide and that trailer's about 10 feet from the fence. Once I get that piece of tin off, we can lay it from the roof of the trailer to the top of the fence. Somebody light, like Kit, can slide right down and out of Pinson. Hal thought about it. Man, what's going to happen when he falls off the other side of that slide? He's going to break his leg. I looked at Kit. Kit, you know how to make a monkey landing? Kit shook his head. Like this, I said, and I jumped up and landed with most of my weight on my knees. I bent them slowly and then rolled across the ground. You got to take a fall just like that. Just sink into the ground when you land and roll over. I don't know if I could do it. You can do it, and after you get over there, you're going to go around to the supply room door next to the kitchen where you get haircuts. When I was in there, I saw that you can get in from the outside without a key. They just come in there to drop off food boxes. Once you get in, though, you got to prop that door open so it won't lock behind you. Then there's got to be somebody to open the kitchen, from, kitchen door from the inside. We'll be there waiting for you. Man, how are you going to get through that kitchen to the supply room door? Hal asked. Ms. Bruce said locks it every night and takes the key home with her. I got it all figured out, Hal. Don't you worry about it. You better have. You got to figure out what car. You figure out what car we're going to drive out of here? I don't know yet. Whichever one has keys in it. Y'all ready? I'm ready, Moon, Kit said. Hal frowned and shook his head. I guess. Jesus. Kit and I stood on Hal's shoulders to get to the roof, where I started unscrewing a piece of sheet tin. I went slow so I wouldn't make any noise and wake Mr. Gene. We could see every window of his kitchen from where we were, and the streetlight had us lit up like we were on stage. I told Kit to keep a lookout for anything unusual going on at Mr. Gene's house. It seemed that I took out nearly 50 screws and passed 30 minutes before I could lift the sheet tin. When I looked down, Hal was sitting against the trailer, sleeping. Hal! Hal! I said. He jerked awake and ugh, rubbed his eyes. Get ready. Go stand under this slide I'm about to make in case Kit falls. Man, this better work. I'm tired. Hurry up, I said. Hal stood and walked around the other side of the trailer near the fence. You ready, Kit? I think so. I lifted the tin and walked to the edge of the trailer. My plan was to stand it straight up in the air and then let it slowly down to let it down slowly to the top of the fence. But when I had it up, a breeze came and blew against it. I almost slid off the roof trying to hold it. Kit, Kit, come help me. Kit, I'm about to fall off here. Kit jumped up and grabbed one side of the tin. The breeze came again and blew against it. We held the best we could, but we weren't strong enough. The tin slipped from our fingers and slammed down on top of the fence. A prickly feeling shot up my back as I heard the sound travel against the yard. I saw Hal dive to the ground and lie still. Get down, I told Kit. Lie as flat as you can on the roof. Kit and I flattened ourselves against the roof and watched Mr. Gene's house. Not a second later, his kitchen light came on and his face came pressed against the glass. I knew he couldn't see the tin line over the fence from where he was, but he could see us on the roof of the trailer if we weren't low enough. Oh, what are we going to do? Kit whispered, shh, suck in your stomach. Hey, anybody coming? Shh. We watched Mr. Gene's face. He was staring directly at us. Kit was breathing loudly. His feet were shaking. It seemed like 10 minutes passed before Mr. Gene stepped away from the window and turned off his kitchen light. We lay there quietly for several minutes until Hal called from us below. Hey, anybody see you? No, I said. Mr. Gene looked out his window, but he didn't see us. Mr. Gene, shh, he might not be asleep again. Man, I'm getting out of here. We need you, Hal. He'll be back in bed by now. Kit, go ahead and start out there. Kit was still shaking from our close call. He nodded at me and began to crawl out onto the sheet tent. I knelt on the end that, so that it wouldn't slip. Sliding forward on his knees, Kit made his way to where the metal hung over the outside of the pins and fence. When he, started, when he stared down at the ground at the other end, he looked back at me. That's good, I whispered. Now, remember what I said about that monkey landing? 
Kit nodded and looked back at the ground. I thought he might hesitate, but he got up to the edge and just jumped right off. He hit the ground almost like I showed him and he rolled across the grass. I held my, my breath hoping that he wasn't hurt until he stood up and brushed off his pant legs. He turned around and smiled like that. I looked down at Hal. I told you we were gonna bust out of here. Hal smiled at me nervously. Let's just hope you're right about that kitchen door. You can't get it open. We ain't gonna be able to help him get back in here again. I jumped down from the roof and we ran across the play yard and slipped back into the bunk room. Hey, what are y'all doing? We heard a kid named Eddie say from his bed. Go to sleep, Eddie, Hal snapped. I gotta get something, I said. Wait here. I hurried to the bathroom. I stood on a chair and carefully pulled out a sh pulled a shower rod loose. After stripping it of the curtain, I tucked it under my arm and I returned to Hal. Man, y'all gonna get us in trouble, Eddie said. Eddie, if you don't want me to beat the crap out of you, Hal said, then shut your little baby mouth. We continued into the dining hall where I stopped in front of the kitchen door. Watch this, I said. I took the shower rod and stuck it through the slot in the wire mesh where the dishes were returned. By working it sideways, I was able to press against the deadbolt latch and in a second, click, the cage door popped loose and swung open. Man, I ain't believe in this, Hal said. All them nights I was hungry. Come on, I said. By the time we made it to the back of the kitchen, we heard Kit tapping on the inside door of the store, of the supply room. I unlocked it and opened it, and he stood there grinning. I can't believe it, Hal said. We're just gonna walk right out of here. I motioned through the open door with my hand. Go and find something you can drive. Hal went outside and disappeared into the parking lot around the corner. I turned to Kit. You sure you wanna go? Kit nodded his head. Why are you quiet? Why are you so quiet? I'm just a little scared is all. About what? About getting caught, he said. Shoot, we'll get out again if they catch us. What about your medicine? I don't need it. Are you sure? Kid hesitated for a second, then said, Yeah, I'm sure. I don't need it anymore. We don't need anything anymore, Kit. We can make everything we need. Yeah, we'll go to Alaska. Yeah, we'll go to Alaska where there's all kinds of people that live in the forest that don't need the government. Kit began to knead his hands together with excitement. Tell me what kind of things we'll eat, Moon. Anything we want, deer, rabbit, coon, turkey, acorns, pine needle tea, huckleberries, thistle, cattails, poke salad. There's everything you could ever want out there. That's what I want. I wanna get my own food from out of the forest. We'll hide for a while and I'll teach you all some things about living out. Once everybody stops looking for us and we got plenty of supplies, we can start for Alaska and find some more people that hate the government. Yeah, Kit said. Both of us thought about all that while we waited on Hal. I gotta get a gun too, I said. Maybe we could find the way to my shelter and get Pap's rifle. You know anything about the roads around here? Kit shook his head. Hal probably does, I said. Suddenly, we heard something that sounded like a big truck coming around the corner. Kit and I looked at each other. What do you get that makes such a loud noise, I said. Kit's eyes grew wide, I don't know. Hal pulled up to the door and stopped. Hey, hey Moon, came his voice. I looked out and I saw Hal standing in front of a bus. Man, why'd you get that? Hal shrugged. It's the only thing that had keys in it. I found him under the seat. Man, Mr. Gene's gonna be mad now. Kit said he loves that school bus. How many does it hold? I don't know, it's got about 12 seats in it, Hal said. It'll hold everybody with two people to a seat. All right, I'm gonna go see who all wants to go. Whoever wants out of here might as well come with us now. What? Hal said, after all this, you're gonna go and get us busted? I won't get us busted. Ah, oh, crap. Hal said, shook his head and spit, man, suit yourself. I think you're crazy. I started back toward the bunk room with Kit following me. Moon, I don't think we should get everybody up. I think we should just go in and, and leave while we can. But it doesn't seem fair, I said. I'll bet everybody in here is about to go crazy thinking about getting out. I flipped on the light of the bunk room. Everybody stay quiet, I said. We're busting out of here. Anybody that's coming, we got a bus waiting for you outside the kitchen. All them boys on a bus, you think Hal's gonna make it with Moon and Kit? We'll find out in chapter 17.